Hi, everyone. This is Kirsten with Fox Point Publishing, and we are doing our monthly live Fox Talk on Facebook. But tonight we are on Heather Skinner's book club group. So we're not on the Fox Point group. OK, we're in the right place. Um, all right. Uh, a couple different things. If you've ever watched uh, what we do on a monthly basis here, the only way for us to know that you exist, if you want to put your name in for a drawing for a free book, and I'll give away, I don't know, probably four books, um, you have to write a question in the chat box. Otherwise, we don't know that you exist because we can't see you. So you have to write a question. And I will explain all of who we have on here. We have a lot of authors on tonight and a couple of other editors, marketing, sales, that kind of thing. I'll explain that. So you have to write a question in the chat box and where's Heather on here? There she is. Okay, yep, Heather is the one who's gonna be, well, first of all, she's the lovely hostess of this group. She runs this group. And so thank you very much for allowing us to do this. Thank you for being here. Oh, well, you're sure welcome. We, we got to we gotta transmit ourselves somewhere. So we're going to just crash your group today. It's going to be fun. Anyway, um, but yeah, she's going to be reading the questions that you put in the chat box. And then uh, every so often, we will draw a name and win a book. And um, being that I completely forgot to bring up any books here, all you really have to do is, well, we'll figure it out. Because we've got people and we'll give away some of their books. Okay. So I'm also going to introduce people. So on my screen here, I've got Helen Holder. Um, her book just came, her seventh book just came out. Mm -hmm. Yep, what, what goes up must come down. Um, she is a retired first grade teacher. So she writes for that, you know, first grade, second grade age range. Wonderful books, they sell very well. They're very entertaining. As a matter of fact, she is the monthly guest of Heather Skinner. So you've probably already seen all of their YouTube conversations that they've been having. Um, on the other side of me is Alicia. Her book just came out two days ago, Crafts Create Change. And I'm going to hope that she gets some good airtime on here and can describe it because she does a wonderful job describing it. I'm kind of all over the place, but she's got QR codes and volunteering and sewing crafts. And oh my God, she is the queen of creativity whereas I'm not, but she's really good at it. Um, all right, we've got Heather over there. So you, you guys all know Heather. And then on my screen, Kathy Sullivan down there, which is probably over here on your side. <laughs> Kathy has been writing for a long darn toot in time and she has a lot of books. Her first book has yet to be published through us. She just came on with us, I don't know, probably about a month ago, month and a half ago, something like that. But I have known her since probably 2017-ish. We met at um, a local book festival. So that's why I know her. Um, Carmen, Carmen T down there, Carmen Tribbett, she's got five books out. She's got the Monster Dog book series. Carmen, do you want to tell everyone what this Saturday is for you? <laughs> 90th birthday. Very good. So happy soon to be. Um, radiant than ever. She's a lovely person and we'll get to know more about her. Then we have Amy Gregg. She's got three books out right now, uh, not with Fox Point. Her first one with Fox Point comes out in August, so, and it's a cozy mystery, Farmed and Dangerous, so we're going to hear about that. And then we have Paula, Paula Mama Cat Morehead. I'm Marhart. I'm doing this without glasses because if I put on my glasses, you're going to see all these lights. But anyway, Paula and I have known each other since about 2014, 2015. Great friends. She's got like 14 or 15 books. She's just got lots of books. And yes, this is the bear that is the one out in March now. And um, so we'll hear more from her. Then we are Ekman. This is Raven. Um, she is like our editor in chief's right hand person. Yeah. So Ray has been with us for pretty much two years since pretty much we started. And she does the majority of the editing, but she's also a writer and she's got shadow speak and itchy pants out. Total ends of the spectrum, <laughs> but great writer nonetheless and very creative and definitely helpful to have. And then we have Amy Sullivan. I, I refer to her as AJ Sullivan, her pen name. And she's got her sixth book coming out 
in April. And she does the Bobby Bear series and Finkel and Franny. And she's got some gnome books that she does. And so she's got all sorts of things going on too. And we might have other people join in with us um, if they hop on later. So, okay. Do we have any questions yet? I'm watching out for questions. I don't see any yet. So I'll oh. let you Okay. Well, um, when they pop them in. Okay. All right. Well, while, while we're waiting for, um, oh, I hope I'm not, it says my internet connection is stable. Hopefully it unsta or stabilizes. But anyway, while we're waiting for the first question and literally and, and ask any question, I'm personally, um, besides an author myself, um, I also do publicity, sales, marketing, um, basic instigator of trouble. That's me. <laughs> um, and let's see, Helen does writing, Kathy does writing, uh, Carmen writing, Amy writing, Paula writing, Alicia writing, Ray does writing and um, editing, and then Amy, AJ's got writing. So really, and, and as I tell people, you know, ask us a question, and if we don't know the answer or we don't want to answer it, we'll be creative and make something up. <laughs> It'll be fun. All right, so let's do the first most recent book, Alicia. And oh, I don't know, three to five minutes or less. Tell us everything about your book. Go. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Crafts Create Change is uh, basically over 40 crafts that you can make to donate to causes globally or locally. And uh, we're a nonprofit, so we're all about volunteering. So, it's a form of volunteering. When the pandemic hit, everybody helped and pitched in to make masks. And this book goes a little bit more in depth with the project. So we have bags for kids in foster care. We have um, nose patches for children with bullying. bullying well, I can't even say the word. Vaughn's willy disease, um, maternity from Alzheimer's to everything. We have a little bit of everything. And it's mostly to help out different causes. So if you're a beginner or an intermediate, we have crafts and we have sewing. Um, yeah. And then at the end, the back of the book, we also have community projects and how you can get involved with people in your church um, or people in your, like, your school, uh, et cetera. So yeah, that, I hope. Tell, tell us about the admit your three to five minutes because I can talk a lot about it. <laughs> well, tell us about the oh, you, QR you code. got stuck. Yes. So the great part about the book is that every project um, has a QR code. So you literally, uh, if you want to make the project, you just take your phone, get the QR code, and then it takes you to where you can download the pattern and also look at a video instructions. In addition, on our website, you're probably wondering, like, where do I donate these projects? So you can actually put your zip code or city. And if it doesn't come up, we have a team of people in our nonprofit that you can just write to us and say, hey, I live in Austin, Minnesota, and I want to give blah, 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 and we'll do the legwork for you to find the exact nonprofit. If you live in a smaller area, uh, we'll send you a label and you can ship it to us and we will get it to whoever it is. So we're super passionate about social good. And this is a great book for children to get involved, to learn about helping others and volunteering and the importance that we're not the only people on this earth. And yeah, it's great. It's my book and it's amazing. <laughs> Show us the picture of the billow. Oh, the billow. Oh, yes, the billow. I'm going to that, use that as a segue. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't know what page it's on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but the billow, it's because there's a, there's actually, um, oh, and the great part is for all my Fox Point authors, there in the back, we have Teacup Express. Look That's all that. the different books that people can actually buy for the billow. So the billow is a pillow that either has a pocket to encourage children with reading yep. and it's something really fun, you know? And so we definitely wanted to highlight the books um, so that people don't have to think about what book do I put in there? And oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's in there. So I love well, you guys. I don't know you guys, but I know you're doing great things. My daughter loves the books. So yeah. I, I will say Alicia's child has a number of our books. That, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, she does. Um, all right. Well, in pictured in that book, um, in the billow is terrific oh, yeah. tongues. So yeah. perfect tongues. Right there. 
and we have the <laughs> author author for that. So Helen, you're next then. Well, all right then. So I had, had looked in Carmen's book and found Fox Point Publishing because I had not, I needed a publisher badly because I was not doing well at trying not to do anything by myself. And I saw Fox Point and I thought, mm, could that be in Austin? <laughs> so I met with Kirsten and Chelsea in March of 2020. I think the next we met at Perkins and the next day all the restaurants were closed. Yep. So I I came with the book that I had illustrated. And then when we they were excited about that and said, oh yeah, yeah, we'll take that one. And then I said, well, I have these other ones too. So they took them all, <laughs> including terrific tongues. And I painted a magenta flamingo and glorious Gertie's fabulous fireworks and sleepover with grandma and an unusual tale. And actually what goes up must come down, mm -hmm. but I needed to add a little bit more to that one. So, so it's been a wild, exciting time. Exactly. I didn't, I didn't know authors had to be businesses. Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> <laughs> And, and with that, I could segue to Paula, but before I do, um, Helen's books sell incredibly well. Um, actually, all of our books really sell pretty well. Um, another unusual tale is the uh, sequel to An Unusual Tale because Helen opened herself up to that. The very last line is, but that's a story for another night or a tale for another night. So Chelsea called her and she's like, well, where's the next book? So. Yeah, Helen did. I, yeah, and then there was some, some of my fans said, well, we're waiting for the next story. And it's like, oh, well, I guess I have to write it then. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> all right. So going down to Paula, who did not realize, she told me all she wants to do is write. She doesn't want to run a business, now has 15 books and apparently is running a business. Paula, you're up next. <laughs> well, I, I, I will start with what some people think are the boring books. Um, I have the three books of poetry, Days of Days, Night Maze, and Tears of Pain, Tears of Joy, One Mother's Story. It was the first 25 years of raising children and having grandchildren come at the very end, which was kind of cool. And then um, the thing that, that sells really well, I have four, Kirsten calls them cookbooks. I call them cookbook memoirs. There are 12 little essays in each one with a recipe that goes with that essay from my grandmothers, great grandmothers, great great grandmothers, great great aunts, all those types of recipe boxes. Um, the funniest one is from my Aunt Pearl, and it says it's, it's a fish type of soup, and it says, if you have any clams or oysters handy, by all means put them in. <laughs> so that's a new thing around in the family. Now, by all means, put them in. <laughs> and then I have six children's books. Um, this is the bear will be, um, that's coming out this month. And then I have, is this my grandma? But a little boy who's not quite sure that funny looking person in that funny looking bed is really his grandma. Five friends deep, which is about the best friends that children have, which is their stuffed animals. Sweet and Sour Cherries was my very first book with Fox Point, uh, our first children's book. Um, Ralph does naughty things, and will that sour cherry pie convince him not to do naughty things? And then I'm kind of like Helen. I did Best Magic of All about Toast Ever Troll and Gray Valley. Well, he had a friend, and so Rose gets her name is the fairy, but she had some other friends, and so. Goggle the Frog will be coming out, I think, next year or the year after. And then there's Leaf Roller, the Firefly. And yeah, they just kind of somehow keep going. So. Okay. <laughs> and, and what about your other books? You've got two others. Two other ones that are published through Amazon or through my website. Um, Tear, uh, Widow's Tears of Sorrow is a book of poetry that I wrote three years after my husband and my mother passed away. Um, Widow's Walk. Uh, was actually what got me published because I kept a journal of the year after my husband died suddenly with no explanation and my mother died the next day 
And so I kept a journal and I published it. It's very raw. It's not edited. It's exactly as I experienced it every day, which is what sells it, I think. Um, and then the, the Widow's Tears of Sorrow has 42 poems, one for each year we were married, plus three for my mom. So there's 45 poems all together in those two. Okay. So that's... And I'm, oh, yep, there they are. Yep. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Yeah, I will point out, um, Paula is an award-winning poet and she gets into literary magazines and she has a spot on WNIJ for Poetically Yours, it's Northern Illinois Public Radio and all that. And I was talking to her back in 2020 and she goes, well, I've got this idea for a children's book. I'm like, you should do it. She goes, well, I never thought about it. Now she's got six and I know she's got a lot <laughs> more brewing. So yeah, so very good. Her books sell extremely well too. And now in the vein of journal, before we go to the next one, Heather, do we have any questions? I'm keeping an eye out. None have come in yet. So I just okay. want to remind everybody, if you have questions, pop them in the chat. I'm keeping an eye out. <laughs> yep. You can, if, if we know that you exist and you ask a question, you get a chance to earn a free book and you can pick any book from any of one of one of these authors, I'll get a hold of you, get a mailing address and pop it into the mail for you. So you get a free book, it's pretty cool. All right, in the vein of keeping a journal, um, she doesn't keep a journal, but she wakes up in the middle of the night laughing and writes on post-it notes all over her house. And that would be Carmen. Carmen, do you wanna tell us about your books? Oh, well, I have this monster dog and uh, she's very old now, and but she's, funnier than heck and after my husband died I, I watched her she was really his dog and I watched her and she's just a stitch and she's very bossy and so I started to write on post-its the funny things she did and that led to my first dog book uh, which she narrates by the way and um, so we've ended up with five and the last one is am I on Rear. can you see this yep Okay, the last one is, um, what shall I be when I grow up? And I love the last line. She says, she wishes you joy wherever your paws take you. Mm -hmm. And um, that will be the last of the dog books, I'm sure. And so, uh, as I mentioned, both of us girls are getting awfully old. She's 15 years and eight months now. So, and as you all know, I'm gonna be 90 this week, so. Anyway, uh, that'll probably be the last of the doggy books. And I have been thinking about writing a book about a chipmunk, because I love chipmunks. And I have this wonderful name for him, Alexander Horatio Smythe. And since children like a refrain, that will be the refrain in the book. Okay. But I've, I've not been writing for a very long time. And uh, maybe I'll start again someday. Okay. Well, more more waking up in the middle of the night laughing and post-its and then yeah. around. That'd be nice. And I will add to the Monster Dog series is told in first dog. Yeah, yes, that's yes. really important. Yeah. I miss that. And so, the, my favorite book and the one that I promote the most, because my husband died of Alzheimer's, the second book is my favorite. It's for children to explain what happens when people they love uh, have Alzheimer's and how they she says, the dog says, I know if they've forgotten me in their mind, they'll remember me in my heart, in their hearts. Yep. In their heart. And so that's kind of the theme of the book. And uh, that book is my uh, reason for writing. Yep. All right. So Tossy, the monster dog, is a shih tzu. And the other person on this uh, Zoom call who has a Shih Tzu would be Amy Sullivan slash AJ Sullivan. And her dog is named Lola, which I'm surprised we're not hearing either playing with toys or barking or something. I muted it because she was squeaking something. Oh. <laughs> I didn't right. want to be rude. <clears throat> all right, well, your turn, your turn to tell us all about your books. <laughs> Well, I've been writing since I was like six. Um, 
<laughs> she's just looking at me like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sound familiar, coming? Uh, so I've been writing since I was six, but I didn't actually get published in anything until I was 15. Uh, it was an anthology of uh, stories. And I was a sophomore in high school. And my English teacher said, when he returned a, an essay idea, and he says, Amy, do you realize you're a writer? And I'm like, I am? Well, I am. So um, <laughs> then through my career, I've had a couple of careers. I've done lots of white papers and articles for professional magazines and that kind of thing. Uh, but it was when my children were young. So from 1984 on, I started writing about this little bear. His name is Bobby. And Bobby and all the other characters in the series have first name, middle initial that together make uh, an actual name. And so the first one that I ever told my son was Bobby, see Bob E, so he's Bobby Bear goes fishing. And inside, it describes very specifically how to go fishing. And this mm -hmm. one is mostly about the relationship between grandparents and grandchildren, because Grampy helps him learn. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> every child that's read that this, that has responded to me, has told me that as soon as they're done reading it, they ask their parents if they can go fishing right then and there. <laughs> So this is Minnesota, and it's a popular book here. It is. <laughs> um, and then it goes on each book so far has been, he's gotten a little bit older, he becomes a big brother, uh, he graduates kindergarten, and then my newest one is Bobby Bear and the Bully Bears. Um, we've been hearing all about bullying lately, and so this is, um, a way to address it for second graders is who it was written for. And um, I've had some excellent feedback on this. Uh, the other, <laughs> let's see, the other book that I wrote, it's called Finkel and Franny. Finkel and Franny are flies that get in, got into our car, literally, seriously, true story, got into our car um, and drove across the country with us from Yellowstone to Buffalo, New York. My children named them uh, there's a map in here. We actually stopped in Austin, Minnesota long before I had any idea I would live here. Mm -hmm. It's a true story and it's uh, the illustrations are like a graphic novel. I'm trying to find. So it's for slightly older, older students. Um, and then my gnome book, Hearth and Gnome, I had another one written before this one, and then all of a sudden it was Christmas. <laughs> so the other one will come out. I'm not sure when it's due out, but this one is all about um, Bert the gnome and Brandy the yellow lab who get into shenanigans together. So those are my books so far. I have quite a few in um, files that I just have to get around. I still work full time, so it's not easy to do. <laughs> but, I, I understand, boy. Um, all right, <laughs> let's see, working full time. Okay, over full time would be Ray, cause she just went back into graduate school because she didn't have enough stuff to do. So, all right, yeah, we'll listen to Ray. All right, go. <laughs> yeah, so I, um, so I tutor. And then I'm in grad school and I edit and I write. So when I'm not doing anything that related, I horseback ride. And um, I am looking at getting my own horse. So, you know, just like chalk that up to like, you know, something to do every day besides to hang out with a dog. And then you might see my cats because they have discovered how to open doors oh. and they all are kind of running about my room like crazy. So if I like suddenly pop up, somebody broke something, which is normal for me. Uh, but so in terms of I started editing first, um, I actually wasn't sure about writing myself like I had done 
different things, fan fiction, that kind of stuff. Just like I loved writing, but I didn't ever think I was going to do anything with it. Uh, when I went to school, I had some things published in the magazine, but I didn't have like a full length novel. And suddenly, like with the pandemic and everything, it was kind of like, well, are you going to write and like have something to write? Or are you just kind of kind of keep going? So uh, a little birdie was talking to me, which like my grandmother was definitely encouraging me and uh, talking to Chelsea and everything like that. So I got to work and I had finished my novel before that. And then after debating about it, I will, I definitely debated about it. I, we decided to publish it. So that was Shadow Speak. It's a dark fantasy, uh, psychological romance. I really played around with um, kind of italics in the sense of memories and kind of like a PTSD so the author or the main character, it's in first person, Rune is kind of struggling with different um, memories and like trauma that she's had. So she's like working through it as the story unfolds. And then in my kids book, which is something I had a very rough draft from school is Itchy Pants. And it's about a little monster named Boogly who just wants to be friends with the boy who like he kind of like co-shares a room with. Um, but since he's different looking, he's scary. So Henry's scared of him. So he tries on Henry's pants and clothes to like be more kind of friendlier looking. And then it kind of like the shenanigans go because he's like, well, how do I wear pants? And then uh, like he just acts silly. Um, and then I do have um, for the Itchy Pants series, the Boogly's Adventures, um, there is actually the second book in that series, Spooky Treats, is coming out in October. And Art. I'm starting to work on the sequel. Well, I'm sorry, prequel to Shadow Speak. So. And and so you can't wait six or eight years for that. You can't do that. Yeah, no, I like, yeah, I've, I've been getting like, hey, so when's this coming out? I'm like, well, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah, one. you'll notice that much like um, when people have kids, the minute the first kid shows up, they're like, so when's the second one? It's like, oh my God, we just brought the first one home. And we, yeah. so yeah, well, I have like a new appreciation. So uh, like as an avid reader, but like before I had my own stuff published, I was definitely one of those people. I was like, well, what do you mean? I have to wait an entire year to find out what happened. And now I want to go back and apologize to like all the authors that I was like spamming on social media. Like, where is this book? Cause now I'm like, I understand. Like I, my bad, it takes a long time. Like I get you. <laughs> Readers will chase you around. And I mean, I was just at a, a larger, the St. Paul, Minnesota book festival. And someone comes up to my table and they're like, are you Kirsten Hall? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, I read your first two corner confessions books. When's the third one coming out? I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, it will be here when it gets here. I, and, and true, true. Uh, about four years overdue but you know it's coming and I get busy uh, although I will say I sat down uh what two three days ago I wrote 600 words yeah <laughs> I only have 99,400 more to go but that's beside the point <laughs> anyhow all right let's see um 99,400 Kathy I'm going to pick on you because you've been writing for a long darn time and you've probably being out well I know you have great novels and, and so probably 99,400 would be just a cakewalk no, <laughs> no? okay <laughs> not really <laughs> well too many things going on too many distractions um right now my book the Fox Point isn't out yet I don't even have a cover yet to show you it's Michael and the Elf which is a book I had published elsewhere before and it's a picture book about a boy who finds a small elf in his backyard and decides to help him go home Mm -hmm. and pretending is an important part because in the elf's world if you pretend strongly enough you can become something like an eagle you could be speaking yeah. of eagles where is it's oh gosh what's her name what's what's your bird's name oh, oh bela bela i'm going bela i'm like no, that's not right <laughs> well, bela's downstairs because this is her bedtime and oh that's right screaming and fussing and like Nope, she's downstairs in her cage, covered up for the night. And and what type of parrot is she? She's a Moroccan cockatoo. Oh, oh, that's she right. Dance on my shoulder. She's about yay high. Yep, she's she's quite impressive. Yes. Um, quite <laughs> loud. And all right, speaking of really uh, 
large or loud animals. I don't know if Diesel is loud, but I know he likes to sit on the refrigerator. <laughs> is Was he sitting on the fridge? Yes. Okay, Diesel is Amy's cat. Yep. And he kind of rules the roost over there, which by the way, Amy just got a new house. She's a new homeowner. Yay. Yay. All right, so Amy, it's your turn. <laughs> what would you like to tell everyone? Um, well, I've also been writing for quite a bit. Um, I started writing, um, I guess you would call it fan fiction back in the day. Um, we didn't know it was called that back then. Um, it was X-Men fan fiction. <laughs> And that uh, I wrote with my friend and I in uh, sixth grade, and that just kind of started my love affair with with writing. Um, I don't have my books with me because I'm still in the process of unpacking. As Kristen said, I just moved to my new house, and a lot of my books are in boxes waiting to be unpacked. Um, I do have three books that were published um, before I came to Fox Point. I have. Um, a paranormal urban romance called Magic and Madness. Um, it's set here in Minnesota, mostly in St. Paul, because I wrote it after I went to college in St. Paul. So that area was fresh in my brain. Um, my first full length novel I wrote when I was a senior in high school is called Through the Woods. Um, it is a I guess young adult, new adult, um, action adventure, paranormal um, fantasy book set in England, because um, I had a big England kick back in high school. Um, and then I have another, I guess it's a, a novella, kind of a short story that I also illustrated. It has a comic book at the end of it. Um, kind of like the, the print version of the story and then the comic version of the story. It's called Next Weekend. It's a uh, contemporary little cute romance kind of um, will they won't they finally get together type of thing you know pining love all that fun stuff just kind of a cute little story um, and just quick little cute thing and my current book that is finishing up editing should be done soon needed just crossing T's and dotting I's um, is my first in a cozy mystery series called um, Farmed and Dangerous. The series is called An Accidental Farmer Murder Mystery or Mystery Series. Um, it is a love letter to my grandparents who grew up in Southern Minnesota, Sleepy Eye, Brown County, Mankato, New Ulm, that area. It's my love letter to them because I grew up mostly on their farm. And just kind of a fish out of water, um, kind of like murder she wrote means meets Green Acres, where the city girl goes back to the farm and just gets into a bunch of shenanigans and tries to find her place again after being uprooted. Um, and then also solves murders on the side. So, so yes, I've been getting a lot of feedback that it's, uh, I guess it's funnier than I thought it was going to be. I didn't mean it to be funny, but I guess it is. <laughs> um, so that's good. Yeah, that is good. It's good to laugh. Yeah, I don't have books to show you. Otherwise I'd be like, yay. Look at this. <laughs> um, well, I will say if you look on our uh, website, uh, boxpointpublishing.com, and that's F-O-X-P-O-I-N-T-E, publishing.com, the E is because, well, we're fancy. But if you look um, on that first page, actually, you'll see Farmed and Dangerous and the upcoming um, adult and young adult novels and such. Mm -hmm. All right, Heather, do we have any uh, questions? Okay, so we don't have any questions yet, but we do have people popping in to say hello so far. So if you guys have questions, please let us know in the chat as well. Um, Kayla Lynn said hello, which I think is actually one All of right, your well, illustrators, right? Hi, Kayla. <laughs> Hi, Kayla. Um, um, and then Tracy, let me know if I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. I hope Wirick. Wirick. Um, hi, Tracy. She says hello from Delaware. Oh, hi. And hi, Delaware. She's commenting along with you, Amy. Yay, Amy. And oh, that's so sweet, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> All <mean>? right. <laughs> well, um, okay. Well, actually, I was, and it was, well, quick say what we do on the side or a, a, for a full-time job or whatever but then I was going to put Heather on the hot spot or on the hot seat and um, have her ask us a, a question that we could maybe get more questions start because 
Now, I know Heather's got a number of our books too. I, I seem to keep sending books to her neck of the woods. So um, yeah, so she's got a lot of books, but if anyone else would like some books, all you have to do is ask us a question. It could be just, you know, whatever, but you have a lot of writers here. You have an editor, you have a publicist here. So yeah. Anyway, all right. So quick, Helen, what do you do besides writing? And you're well, muted. Yes. I, uh, I wrote in the, in my author blurb that I uh, do origami and bookmaking and collect nativities. And so Heather was kind of interested in that. So I, I started collecting nativities and I was only going to get one a year. So <laughs> I'm really, really old because I have 950 plus. You're an overachiever. That's yes. what you are. Yeah. <laughs> so this table behind me in December is totally covered. And this, this book case behind me is total, totally covered with nativities at Christmas time. So the joke is that you can't, you can't sit down and I can't cook and we can't sit down to eat. And my husband says he has to sleep oh, standing yeah. up, yeah. <laughs> which is not quite true, but close. <laughs> we can have guests involved. in the guest bedroom. They can't sleep, but. <laughs> I, I will say my son went to Helen's house um, as part of another tour. And he's like, oh yeah. It was impressive. He said, I would go again. Um, so next next year, I will roll over to your house and we'll see all the nativities. All right, Alicia, what do you do besides write? Um, I think the internet is better because you guys are like, how? So oh. but anyway, I think I heard the question. Um, so I love to do crafts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love pottery, so I do that. Um, you know, playing with my daughter, spending a lot of time with her. I think that's the number one thing. Mom life is, it is the best life. Your children show you so many different things, and I experienced her through her. Um, but I also think like crafting is also it makes my mind go away too. You know, using my hands and creativity. Uh, reading, I love reading. Um, and yeah, that's 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 about it. And without giving away a specific location, I will also tell you that Alicia lives in Florida, approximately what, two blocks away from the ocean? Three? Five, five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Not even three minutes. We count, we we counted it. Like yeah. <laughs> it's literally it's, right there. Yeah, it is literally right there. And so um, my kids and I decided we're gonna I go to Florida this we're gonna go to Florida in December because we need to leave here. And so we're going to go down and bother all the people <laughs> I know in Florida. And Alicia is one of them. And actually, I met Alicia back in August of 2017, I think, at the Freeborn County Fair in Albert Lee. So it's yep. just amazing the crazy things. It's a small world. Yeah. All right. Um, Ray, what do you do? Minnesota. So, yeah, I know the cold. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know you know the cold. I, that's, that's one of my funny memories of that. Um, all right. Ray, what do you do? Well, let's see. You go to school. You have a lot of animals and you edit and you're a tutor. You're muted or we can't hear you. Or I can't hear you. We can't hear you. Microphone's not attached. Did the cat take it apart? <laughs> yes, actually the oh, cat did. I will, oh. can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Like I actually, so I don't know why I still have them on. Somebody decided it would be really cool to chew a hole oh. through the cord. As I'm like, so I'm listening to you guys. I'm like this. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, what happened? And I'm like, eh. <laughs> oh, there okay. you go. I'm glad I just bought these. So anyway, <laughs> um, when I'm not cat herding or dog herding or horseback riding or grad schooling or tutoring, <laughs> I, I, I think I'm sleeping. You think? <laughs> I yeah. think. I mean, I'm not 100 percent because lately, like ever since, like my problem when I started writing, well, maybe not a problem, but when I started writing, I like dream a lot about what I'm writing, mm -hmm. and then by default, like with the sticky notes, like I must, like I have like six notebooks and sticky notes, pens everywhere because somehow, some way, like some kind of uh, like line 
some maybe like a bigger dialogue snippet, something will pop into my head and I have to like write it down or else I'll forget and then be really mad at myself because I didn't write it down. Um, but yeah, like sleeping, sleeping's a goal of mine between writing the book and surviving <laughs> everything fun. else. <laughs> sleeping's fun. All right, Amy, what do you do when you're not writing and chasing after the cat and your daughter? Oh, me, I mean this cat? That cat. That's diesel. That's diesel, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, what do I do? Well, I work at a local hospital. And when I'm not doing that, um, yeah, I'm hurting my kid and this rambunctious dude back here. Um, for being 17 and a half, he is a handful. Um, he's my crabby old man. Um, what else do I do? I read a lot. I knit, I have a perpetual, um, what I call the movie scarf, where I just keep adding to it and it is 275 feet long. Just one <laughs> piece of <the> scarf. <laughs> I just, I just it's not a scarf movies. anymore. <laughs> no, I, I just knit and watch movies so I can do something with my hand and it's 275 feet long. Um, hey, monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Can you know, go, big, go big or go home um, I guess, yeah and I yeah I, I like with Ray I sleep in there somewhere um and yeah just try to find time to think of the next book <laughs> wow okay that's impressive yep. all right Carmen what do you do besides write and you laugh at Tossie. I have a perennial garden, 10 beds, and I've ordered 100 bulbs, so I'll be planting again. And I'm looking forward to that in spring. Yep, she has a beautiful backyard and, and uh, raised Terrible. garden levels. And yeah, she does yeah. a beautiful job back there. And I uh, keep really be busy, have a busy social life. She is a butterfly, a social butterfly. She, when I went over for dinner a couple of days ago, she held up her calendar and every little square has something in it. She's like, I'm busy. I'm like, yeah, you are. <laughs> Never bored. No. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm a frustrated history teacher. I have a, had a degree in history, but I never got to teach it other than in sixth grade. So I read a lot of history. I didn't know you had a degree in history. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh well and she used to be a nurse and she used to be a school teacher and full-time mom and my yeah, fifth she, huh this is my fifth career yeah well she's she's a wonderful person to talk to and Carmen well when like I said when I was supposed to go over there which I thought was this next weekend and it was actually that weekend she's like you should just come in and we'll eat dinner and then you can run away I said you know that's not going to work that way you and I when Carmen and I get to get together we sit there and chat until the cows come home <laughs> so it's, she's very easy to talk to um all right Paula what do you do when you're not writing um, gardening. I have a huge garden and fruit trees and I can and freeze and dehydrate everything, make most of my, or grow most of my own food. Um, I quilt, I sew, I work on the scroll saw. Um, I love, 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 love to go camping. And I started collecting Santas and I thought I had a lot of them until I met Helen because I've got like 216 or something like that with them. And I thought, well, this is way too many. And then I met Helen and I, and I have a long ways to go before I have too many. <laughs> and I play with my grandchildren. I had my first great grandchild this July. Only nice. he's down in Virginia. So I only get to video, but I video chat with him quite often. So. Okay. And yeah, she keeps her Santas in a closet and she writes on Facebook, she's going to open the closet and they're going to burst out of there. And, and is that yeah, an idea? Yeah a big whole long thing through part of November and December about the holiday closet prison breakout. And <laughs> the Santas, the Santas went through the, the mountainous region of County stairwell. And then they made it through County kitchen. 
and uh -huh. finally made it to county living room where they set up near this gigantic conifer that appeared all of a sudden by Jack the giant, the, the great gardener planted the seed and it grew up. And so, yeah, there was a whole storyline, which may end up turning into a book yet. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking right there. She's describing a book right there, which should be perfect. Um, all right, you guys keep jumping around. Kathy, what do you do when you're not writing or uh, chatting with Bela? Uh, reading and going to science fiction conventions. Mid South Con is going to be this weekend, so I'll be yep. heading to there pretty soon. It's going to be that's in Memphis. And where's that one located? Memphis. Memphis. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I've got I'm on several panels. One about Doctor Who. One about uh, trends in YA and middle grade. And uh, let's see, I've got several more, as well as a signing table. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, I thought I traveled a lot. And then I looked at Kathy's schedule. I'm like, I don't travel that much. Man almighty, she is all over the place. I'm retired now, so I can promote my book. There you go. You can go. All right, let's see. AJ, I haven't done, I haven't asked you, what do you do when you're not writing? Well, let's see. I'm a college and career counselor. And I'm a certified um coach for a career coach for uh 18 to 25 year olds and i am in an all-female american legion post i am a navy veteran and <laughs> hmm. of course you saw lola pop in uh i just oh and i'm tutoring young elementary school children in reading comprehension. Imagine that. Yep. So that's just a few things in addition to being a grandmother. I just got back from California with a, uh, from a trip with my oldest grandson, just the two of us. Oh. Over spring break. All right. I was going to ask who you went out there with. Liam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, very cool. And he's what, 15? No, 16. 15. 15. He just got his permit. Not yet. He's got he's finished driver the written part of driver's head, but now yeah. he has to now he has to get the permit so he can practice. Okay. Cool. All right. Do we have any questions yet? We actually have a bunch of great questions coming in. A, a yeah. lot of it from Tracy. She's really excited about this conversation. Thank you so much for your great questions, Tracy. Um, and I do remember after, I think we have one that was pre-submitted. So I don't want to okay. forget about that one. Um, so the first question that Tracy put in, who is your favorite character you've written about? Okay, we'll, we'll do a quick fire round on this. And we're gonna start with Helen. She's got lots of characters. Well, I guess, uh... I, I, I'd say it's hard to say. I think uh, the grandma is my favorite. Yeah. Just because all of my other books have a little, little lesson at least in them. And then I had somebody who was reading Sleepover with Grandma and they were sure that there was going to be a good lesson about cleaning up your own messes at the <laughs> end. And so they were kind of surprised at the end because nope. Yes, nope. Grandma is not helping the children to be well behaved. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty darn sure that I'm going to be that grandma when my kids get around to well, because I'm already that mom, so I I would just naturally assume I'll be that grandma too. Um, and I forgot to say too that I've got uh, three adult books, and I've got I've got a humorous memoir, two general fictions, which one of these days we'll see the third general fiction, and then I've got three children's books. Uh, Jelly Beans, The Blue Frog, and Scout. And I think out of all of those books, The Blue Frog is my favorite because in reality, it's an autobiography of my childhood. Uh, the Blue Frog does things around the house and because the kids didn't do it. I mean, who left the light on? Who left the back door open? Like, I don't know. And, and it was my mom who brought up, you know, she's like, well, maybe it was The Blue Frog. And we're like, mm -hmm. it was definitely The Blue Frog. <laughs> Yeah, imagine our surprise when we figured out it wasn't. But um, so yeah, that's the blue frog is my favorite. Kathy, who's your favorite character? <laughs> well, if you allow books that have been published by Fox Point, uh, oh, sure. Crystal Throne, I've got a horse-like being who wants to be a scholar. He he follows all the legends of the land, and that's why the herd casts him out. Okay. All right, cool. Carmen, who's your favorite character you've written about? 
my husband in the book that's coming out about Alzheimer's. Yeah, definitely. Amy, how about you? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, you, Amy. <laughs> like, there's like seven of us. I know. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, it's going to be really weird. I have two. Okay. There's in Through the Woods, there's, it's a, because it's a paranormal action adventure thing. There's this little made up monster called an Uzin that I made up for the, the story. And it has, like it crawls around like a spider monkey and it has a, a mouth that opens up, but like a Venus fly trap, but like in three parts. Uh -huh. And I just really liked that character and that character design. I just love that little little monkey. Um, it can eat your face off, but I love it. Well, you know, um, whatever. <laughs> technicalities. And, you know. And then the other character I like is, um, he's in uh, Farmed and Dangerous. It's Ryan, the um, curmudgeonly farmhand of my main character. And he just, I don't know, I just, I just like how he's just like, he doesn't care, he doesn't care like what you think. And he, he just says, what he, thanks and he's like I don't care if you like me or not I'm just here and it's something that I wish I could do mm -hmm. myself of like just be like I don't care this is me this is me too bad okay cool all right Ray who's your favorite character uh I would have to say in shadow speak I love my shadows themselves that each have their personalities and or my gatekeeper like creature who I am exploring her story Okay, cool. All right, AJ, who's your favorite character? Well, Bobby, Bobby Bear. He has, um, he helped me teach my own son's life lessons. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, as he gets older, I don't know how I'm going to attract older readers except to morph how he looks. I don't know. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah, we're going to have to leave that to Kayla, who's watching. Kayla's yeah, doing a job. 12 year olds are not going to want to see the fluffy little Bobby Bear cartoony one we have now. Probably so hmm. maybe it'll have to go into like graphic novels or something. Something on that order, yes. And Kayla did uh, Finkel and Franny too. So. Yes, she did. All right, Paula, who is your favorite character? Um. I, I absolutely love Ralph, the, the bunny that does naughty things he, yeah. because he was my first. But Toe Stubber, the troll, and the wise crone in Best Magic of All are my two best favorite characters out of all my books. Mm -hmm. I, um, I was just, I was at a bookstore today showing someone uh, sweet sour cherries and on the top of one of those pages, Ralphie is taking a uh, the end of the toilet paper roll and running through the house with that. That is my one of my favorite shots through that book. And then I would ask Alicia, but she disappeared on my screen. She's here. Is she here? Okay, well, when she comes back, we'll ask her that question. All right, when's the, what's the next question? All right, next, Tracy <laughs> wanted to know where everyone is from or where do you live now? Okay, Helen, you're up. <laughs> Well, I live in Austin, Minnesota. I've been here since 1978. Okay. Um, I am personally in Austin, Minnesota as well. And Helen lives over that way by about <laughs> five miles. Um, and I have, I moved here in 2010. There you go. All right, Kathy, where are you? Austin, 78. I've been here since 68, or I've been here longer than I thought. <laughs> I'm originally from the Chicago suburbs and I moved up to Minnesota, Winona, Minnesota in 1978. So I've been here for a little bit. Okay. All right, Carmen, where are you? It's my life and death to live in Austin, Minnesota. I got away for <laughs> when I was a child for a few years and then my father brought us screaming back to Minnesota. I don't like the cold. Oh, no. And then, uh, my husband did the same thing. 
And he promised me we'd stay here three years, but he loved his work. So here we are. And here you go. And Carmen lives about that way, about three miles from me. <laughs> um, all right, Amy, uh, where do you live? I live in Young America, Minnesota, which is about an hour-ish west of the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit north, north of everyone else. Yep. And then uh, Ray, where do you live? I am currently in Pennsylvania. Nice. And one of these days I will get out there, hopefully this year. I'm supposed to be out in the Carolinas in November. So I figured I would take this roundabout way to get to North <laughs> Carolina and go bother Ray. It'll be fun. I'm sure she'll think the same. Um, AJ, where, boy, AJ's got a lot of questions. Where of where all the places you've lived? I've lived in 12 states and in Spain. When I was stationed in Spain when I was in the Navy. That's where my oldest son was born. Um, and I have stepped foot in all but three United States. I still need Hawaii, Alaska, and Washington, but otherwise I've been in the mall. Mm -hmm. And Amy lives that way for me by about 500 yards. Across, <laughs> across the street. Across the street, literally. <laughs> um, all right, and then Paula, where are you from? I am in Northwest Illinois, where I have been since I was born in 1958, so. <laughs> so there you go. And, and I will say too, um, Northwest Illinois, I went down there uh, August into September this past year. Oh my gosh. I mean, I've been through there before, but you know, I guess I forgot because I drove back through there, you know, hitting different places with Paula's books. Darn, you picked a lovely place in that state to live. So your, your parents did well. And Elisa yes. was not here internet. She disappeared. Well, her, her internet is acting up. But okay, all right, what's the next question? All right, next, Candlelyn. Oh, did you come on, Alicia? Nope. Nope, she was going to try. Well, when she does, we'll hit her with a Yeah, my internet is acting oh. up really bad. I don't know why. All right, well, <clears throat> do you, oh, uh, you want to tell us all the places you've lived? I've no, I know you've lived a number of places. Yes, I live in Florida now, uh, but I've lived in Minnesota, I've lived in Spain, I've lived in Trinidad, Connecticut, New York, California. Uh, oh my God, I can go on and on <laughs> of all the places I've lived. Mm -hmm. So um, I love traveling and I love learning about different cultures. And so, yeah, that's probably why I've lived in all those places. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I don't think they can hear me. Yep, no, we can hear you. Oh, yes. nope. oh okay. The there you are. There we are. Okay. And what was the first question that she missed? Um, the first question was, I believe, your favorite. Who's your favorite character you've written about? Alicia? Um, I've not, I haven't written about any characters as of yet. Yeah. Uh, my first book was more about, uh, it was like, personal development so yep. it was it wasn't yeah probably you but, I, but 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 my favorite book as a child is uh -huh. judy bloom dear god it's me margaret and margaret would be my favorite character <laughs> <laughs> all right all right next question all right kayla lynn said raven i didn't hear if this was talked about yet but are you thinking of doing book two to your romance novel You're, you're muted there. I know, like like yeah. I said, my lovely cat decided to ruin my <laughs> headphones. Um, yes, I am, and I am working on it. So it has begun. The process has already started, and I already actually have a relationship that I was not expecting. So like there, there I like I don't like love writing love triangles, nor do I like love triangles. But I actually think I kind of developed a love triangle by accident. <laughs> So we'll see. Okay. Um, and then, all right. Next question. Um, Kayla also asked, Helen, are you going to write a children's book about your nativity scene collecting? <laughs> well, I don't know. I might 
I, I have thought about uh, doing an opposites book, you know, black and white and small and large and old, new, whatever. <laughs> but I haven't done anything with that so far. Yeah. And I will say right now it's seven o'clock. Um, how many more questions do we have? And are we still good to go? Or where, where, where is everyone? Um, I'm seeing a couple more in the chat and then there's the one more that was pre-selected. So, okay. so yeah, if, we'll, we'll do those and then there you go. All right. Okay. Perfect. So the next couple, I think were when we were talking about gardening, um, let me just scroll and find those, uh, Carmen, do you post photos of your garden and Paula, do you forage for mushrooms? <laughs> I don't post uh, pictures, but I have a lovely garden of perennials mostly. 10 beds and no 11 beds. And uh, it's just a great joy. I have 100 bulbs coming to plant. So, you know, I have a lot of flowers. I do not forage for mushrooms. I do go out looking for morels, however. That's the mushroom that I know the best. And I do go out looking for those. Mm -hmm. And, and I will add to that, when I lived in central Illinois, um, I had come out of northern Minnesota and I moved to central Illinois for a brief 18 month stint. And people would say, oh, we're going to go mushroom hunting. And I was like, what? And I'm thinking, you know, what, you're going to go snipe hunting? I mean, what are you thinking, you know? And they're like, mushroom hunting. I mean, they would take days off of work mm -hmm. and vacation days mm -hmm. to go wander around. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Okay. But yes, I've had more else and they were very good, yes. So, all right, next. Um, let's see, I think next we're on to the one that was submitted in advance. Um, Carrie Weston was wondering about your publishing house. She wanted to know if it's traditional. Oh, that's right. Okay, I think I'd seen that. Well, no, because um, <laughs> in a short answer, no, because I have not won the lottery. Occasionally I remember to, try but it just never works so there you go and um i unfortunately was not born into a, a wealthy family or if they are wealthy they haven't told me yet and they're keeping <laughs> it a big surprise so i don't know or whatever no we're a hybrid publisher um so we have the knowledge we have the neurotic perfectionism we have the work ethic i work a lot a lot i i either work or i sleep that's why i don't get a chance to write <laughs> because I'm doing either one of those. Um, but uh, yeah, we're a hybrid publisher. So yes, there is some money up front. I will say though that um, the people that we work with are incredibly talented and being neurotic perfectionists, I will, um, my daughter is my co-publisher. She's the one that does all the book production mm -hmm. stuff. And if you think I'm a neurotic perfectionist, oh my gosh, you need to meet my daughter. <laughs> Holy monkeys. Um, but yeah, that's what makes a good product. And it makes it very easy for me to go out and sell. So um, along with uh, publishing the books, um, I tried to impart my, I call it wisdom of going out. And I try to help set up people for different gigs. And then I personally go out um, and am working with a few other people around the United States and we go out and sell wholesale to retailers, schools, libraries. I mean, it's very much our, we want to get your books out. That, that's our goal, our end all goal, get it into the hands of readers. And um, so, yeah, like I said, I work 18, seven, 365. Um, occasionally I might go shopping but, or shopping camping with Paula. I might go and have dinner with Carmen. <laughs> anyway, but um, that's really what we're going to, but Paula, you had your hands up. Yes, I wanted to say the other thing that you do so very, very well is send out emails. Okay, I have important things to say. Paula's <laughs> giving me grief. That's what she's doing. And Helen's laughing. <gasps> All of them are laughing. <laughs> I, I will say too that Chelsea, I never knew that you could snooze me, me emails on Gmail. And I asked my daughter, I said, did you read all those emails I sent? She goes, no, I snoozed them. I'm like, what do you mean you snoozed them? My daughter snoozed my emails. <laughs> yes, I send out emails, but I have lots to say. I'm a writer and I'm full of 
knowledge and wisdom or BS, either one, you know, whatever. <laughs> one. And uh, yeah, so Paula's giving me grief. I send out emails. <laughs> but yeah, if you have other questions, you can always uh, message me through Facebook or whatever, and I will divulge all of my wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> With lots laughing. of emails. <laughs> yes. Right, I was going to say lots of emails. Okay, it was AJ who was laughing, having a great time down there. Okay, I'm like, <laughs> I hear someone like really laughing. Yeah, uh -huh, like right there. See, they're giving me grief. That's because <laughs> we care. Because you care. Yes. They like me. They really, really <laughs> like me. <laughs> Actually, anyway. we live so close, you could send me notes on a paper paper airplane just I as easily. Paper airplane, send it over that way. And actually, after I read them, I read them before I delete them. Okay, I do well, read thank them. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? I you know how parents like hide a five or ten dollar bill in the kid's room, and then they can go clean it, and then you know find money. That's what I should do. I should put like a a. a a weird word in the middle of my 35,000 word email and see who picks it up first. And then, you know, I don't know, you get a $5 gift certificate to McDonald's. I don't know what you get, but anyway, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I will say though, um, although um, we have an incredible um, group of people, um, everyone we've got like 41 people with box point right now and so chelsea and i are very blessed we know this every day and so it is in my how lucky we are i always want to make sure i go out and represent everyone with box point to the highest mark and and do well by this company and everyone that has put faith in us so that's that's a big thing anyway <laughs> And we appreciate it. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. That was the last question, right? It was. And if you guys want to look after, there's been some great chatting going on along the way too, okay. responding kind of to the conversation, which I've been loving seeing. Um, and I actually do have my own question because oh, I'm a little intrigued by um, Alicia's book. You said there's QR codes, mm -hmm. which I never even thought about that as a next step in books now that they're everywhere. So I'm curious if any of you are thinking of, of including those and where you would go with that. Like I never thought about that in the book world. So that's blown my mind tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alicia put a lot of work into this. And it's just amazing. Like I said, all the different creativity she's I mean, just beyond the physical creativity. I mean, I, wow. Um, I don't know what I would do for a QR code. Um, again, I don't know if I'm that creative. How about the rest of you? You think I probably, I probably put it like either like on the back of your back of the book of like you scan it and it goes to your websites like Facebook, oh, yeah. Instagram, just so that people can go to your social media right away if you have a website. Yes. Um, yep, that would be a good idea. But the interior of the story. I don't know if that would yeah. play into any of our our stuff. Well, <clears throat> once once I learn how to use the square properly, maybe I could in, in advance to something else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just posted a picture of Helen at a um, books book event here just a few days ago and she's sitting there trying to figure out her square. <laughs> and her husband took a picture. And then, and then the it was a very patient purchaser. Yeah. <laughs> Two times I had I had to enter his number manually and I messed it up. And then I had him buying three of the same books. I had to mess that get that. Oh, no. oh my gosh. And then I just handed the phone to him and said, put your number in yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just laughing. And <laughs> he did it and it all came out all right. But it's like. By the time by the time I learn how to do this, I'll probably be dead. <laughs> I don't need to. <laughs> I see it's Heather cool. has a mini me. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. You know, hi. Hi. This is hi. Emma. <laughs> hi Emma. You look just like your mama. <laughs> and uh, another one who has a mini me is Amy. Amy and her and her little mini me. Oh, there she is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And and she's got a writer soul in her too. Yep. Does Gemma have a writer soul in her? 
Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wrote a book called The Ch Cool Chickens. Okay. And, Chicken. and the stars are our six chickens. <laughs> oh. You can't sound like me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um You can't sound like me. <laughs> okay, so did we did we answer the last question? Oh dear. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah I haven't question? seen any new questions come in yet. So okay. I think we've got all, right. all the questions. Okay, <laughs> good. See, I'm not totally out to lunch. All right, so Ooh. thank you so much again to Heather for hosting us on her Facebook group page. And thank um, you all for being here. This has been so much fun. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you guys want to check out our website, boxpointpublishing.com, F-O-X-P-O-I-N-T-E, publishing.com. Um, or if you look up Box Point Publishing on Facebook or whatever, but on the website, honest to God, it has everything plus the kitchen sink on that thing. I am updating that like three, four times a day. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to check out, well, the first page has got all the different book covers that come up. You can click on any of those and that'll take you to the book information page if there is one. Um, and most do, unless, of course, there's not a release date, then you'll go straight to the author's page. Along the navigation, if you hit professionals and get onto that page, you'll find all of the authors and then all the fabulous people that create all these books for us. Um, we have our events on there. We have book previews. Um, you'll find uh, through the book pages, as a matter of fact, you can click, there's YouTube videos. I've made flip throughs for all of the books. And so you can see the books, you know, before you buy them. Um, share the the Facebook page and stuff with your friends, please, because we are definitely the new kids in on the literary industry block. And that's all I can think to say. Thank you so much for joining us. Anyone else have anyone anything to say to everyone out here? Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Yes, thank you everyone for joining us. All right, have a good night, guys. Bye. Night. Night. Bye. Night. Bye. Bye. Bye.